guys, welcome to my DVD and Blu-ray update for October. Um, this is a little late in being put up, but it's only because I've been so busy this month and I haven't had a chance to watch all the stuff I got. I still haven't had a chance, but for my next update for the month of November into December, I will definitely have watched the stuff that I got and be able to actually tell you something about it rather than just showing you, which is very boring. I like to at least give my opinions. Um, so the next update I'll do that. Obviously I'm aware this is one of my first videos as well, So, uh, but I, I got a heck of a lot in October, um, more than I really meant to, to buy. Um, what can I say, I'm, a, I'm an addict, Blu-ray addict. I'm not really, but there was a lot of cool stuff that came out in October and um, some stuff I couldn't wait to pick up. Anyway, um, so yeah, if you the next update I'll, I'll do more. Um, more in depth, sort of, or you know, at least talk about stuff a little bit. But for now, I'm mostly gonna just show it, and because uh, as I said, I haven't really watched any of it. Um, but anyway, uh, first off, the DVDs. You'll get an idea of my kind of taste as well, as we see sort of stuff I bought this month. Um, I'm a big uh, classic Doctor Who fan. Only the original series interests me. Um, so I've been buying all the DVDs as they've been released over the last ten years or more. Actually, it's a lot more than ten years now. Anyway, so we're coming to the end of the DVD run. Um, for next month I will be doing a separate video um, about Doctor Who and a review of the upcoming release of The Enemy of the World as well, um, rather than trying to say stuff about that in this video. So, uh, the first one I got is uh, Terror of the Zygons. Uh, this is a classic story. Um, I really don't know what to say about it. It's one of my, uh, probably in my top 20, one of my favourite Tom Baker stories. It's just uh, perfection really. As far as classic Doctor Who goes, it's just beautifully uh, realised and uh, incredibly well executed and across the board a really atmospheric, scary, incredibly enjoyable story and an excellent DVD. Um, the quality of the extras and these uh, DVDs is quite variable um, but uh, the BBC or uh, to entertain or whoever is in charge of the range now did a really great job of this is packed full of extra features and there's a nice newly discovered deleted scene in there as well which has been reincorporated into the main feature. So an all round fantastic release. Uh, if you're new to the series this is definitely a good sort of jumping off point. Um, if you're just starting to get into the original Doctor Who series this is definitely one of the ones I'd recommend to check out. Um, it's, it's quintessential Who. And um, the other release of the month is uh, The Tenth Planet which is the final William Hartnell story. Um, another superb release just jam-packed full of extras. Of particular interest to Doctor Who fans would be the newly discovered um, William Hartnell interview from just not shortly after this was made. Uh, and um, it's one of the most fascinating extras I've seen in the entire range because there are no known existing on-camera interviews with William Hartnell. Just he didn't have a lot of that stuff back then, and um, and he wasn't one uh, that liked to be interviewed. So. It's an incredibly interesting insight into the man behind behind the character of the Doctor. Um, uh, it's just absolutely f just fascinating. What I, I was completely it was amazing to me to see how he, how it was in real life. So that was just one of the many great things about this DVD. And um, the missing episode four. Uh, sorry, this is a four part story. The fourth episode is currently not in the BBC archives. It may yet be returned to those archives, which I will talk about in another video, but at the moment it doesn't currently exist in the archive. So the fourth episode is done with animation to fill in the... Uh, to match alongside the existing television soundtrack, uh, which is fine. And I quite like that sort of style of animation. It's, it's cheap animation, but it's quite well done. Uh, and this is the most complete way to watch the story. And uh, yeah, recommended. Um, I love Hartnell. I don't think this is one of his finest stories, but I, I really enjoy it, and I like the weird original Cyberman too. Um, and then the last DVD for this release is uh, Mystics in Bali. Uh, if you want to know anything about this film, I would suggest watching uh, James Nintendo Nerd <coughs> uh, or James Rolfe's Monster Madness episode, uh, in which he mentions uh, Mystics in Bali. You can find it on YouTube, but I think I can't remember if it's under Cinemassacre. Or, or his other YouTube account, but it's uh, if you type in Monster Madness Mystics in Bali, you'll get the gist of what this film is about. It's completely uh, just crazy, really. Um, awesome Indonesian sort of cult kind of horror movie. Just weird and wonderful. And as you can see there, there is a detached floating human head with the entrails still attached. That sort of sums up the movie 
um, and uh, I absolutely love it. It's it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, hilarious, and for all the right reasons. I'm um, onto the Blu-rays now, so yeah, I haven't had a chance to watch a lot of these guys. I'm hoping maybe one or two I'll return to and do a little mini review on if I can. The first one is a BFI flipside release, and it's the Party's Over, starring Oliver Reed. Um, I'm a huge supporter of the BFI flipside range. I've really been getting into my 60s and 70s British cinema, particularly. I recently just really enjoying a lot of the stuff I've seen and uh, a lot of the stuff the BFI put out and uh, I'm a huge fan of Oliver Reed so I'll sit and watch anything with him in it and um, this just sounds like a typical 60s sort of uh, uh, culture, uh, counterculture type movie I haven't watched it yet so I can't say anything about it I'm sure it'll be very enjoyable can't wait to check it out um, the others are... well I've been very much enjoying my Walter Hill films of late and I really enjoy his work decided to buy some of the ones that I didn't already own because they were going cheap and so the first one I got was Southern Comfort Southern Comfort was on TV a few months back uh, I, I recorded it on my TV and I watched it um, and it's a fantastic film uh, I absolutely love it, great Ryan Cooter soundtrack awesome cast, Walter Hill always just casts his movies beautifully and you've got Powers Booth, Fred Ward uh, Keith Carradine, Carradine. Um, uh, Peter Coyote, who am I forgetting a lot of cool people in there, and I'm a big fan of Powers Booth, and that's this is one of his first lead roles. It's a sort of deliverance light film, a bunch of nat National Guardsmen uh, go on a training exercise down in the south, I can't remember whereabouts, Kentucky, uh, I can't remember Louisiana, and uh, they run afoul of some local Cajuns, and, uh, and uh, yeah, shit hits the fan pretty quickly, let's just put it that way, it just, uh, it, it starts to go bad. Pretty, pretty quick and it's extremely well done very exciting very very cool movie obviously as you can see I haven't watched the Blu-ray yet I'm sure it's very good um, really look forward to watching that again the other one I got is um, The Long Riders which I've never seen it's one of the few Walter Hill films I've never seen and, uh, but it just sounds awesome right up my street um, and a, again a great cast and I really dig I enjoy westerns genu generally anyway and, uh, and uh, this just looks like a, a great movie so that's those. Um, I also took the opportunity to pick up the Basket Case trilogy, which is a, a release I've been waiting for a price drop on us for some time. I managed to get it for very nice and cheap. Um, I've never seen the Basket Case sequels. Um, I've seen the original movie several times. I love the original movie. Really like Frank Ken and Lotter's work. Um, just my kind of thing. Um, and I love Bilal. I love the way he's done in this through sort of mix of stop motion animation and puppetry and. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's an awesome, hilarious movie. I'm really looking forward to watching the sequels, and uh, really lovely steelbook for this as well. Um, Second Sight are really are a company to to watch in the UK. Certainly, they're just doing some stellar releases, consistently good choices of films they release, consistently good transfers and extras, and I like their no frills approach as well. They occasionally put out a steelbook, but other than that, there's no exclusive limited edition type nonsense they just get the, the movies out there in, in the best possible way at a reasonable price and they've been putting out a lot of interesting stuff they're really really doing a great job a lot of people talk about Arrow and Arrow are doing a really good job now they've really turned turned around uh, and um, are doing some really good stuff but I would also say Second Sight are just as worthy of praise they may not as go as all out as Arrow do but uh, they are a fantastic company this basket case and um, uh, there were some Hammer movies going cheap. I've been meaning to pick them up for a while. I enjoy my old Hammer movies. I'm not going to collect them, but I really enjoy them. The Studio Canal releases are really good for the most part. Nice cover art, nice extras. A, a few issues here and there generally, but okay. I haven't seen any of these movies in years. Um, so I can't give you really any coherent thoughts on them. The first one I got was um, The Reptile. Um, you get the idea with these Hammer movies. Great, campy fun. I remember this one being quite enjoyable and a nice release of Studio Canal. These were all good prices. Um, I also got Rasputin, The Mad Monk. I hate, I'm always down with Rasputin, man. Fucking, I, I really like the guy. <laughs> I dig his work. Um, I'm interested in that kind of period in history anyway, so uh, I, I'm sure I'll enjoy this. Um, I barely remember anything about this one now. Um, but, um, yeah, it looks cool. I mean, I remember hearing vaguely there was some kind of sound issue with this release, technical issue. I'm going to have to watch it and see if that's still the case. I can't remember if it's recalled, but Rasputin the Mad Monk looks interesting. Um, the Mummy Shroud, which if memory serves was one of the um, lesser Hammer uh, titles. I don't remember it being as good as the first Hammer Mummy film, but um, 
yeah, look forward to watching it again. It's got Roger Delgado from the original Doctor Who in there, who played the Master. Um, looks like nice extras, and yeah, I look forward to watching The Mummy. And the last one is uh, The Devil Rides Out. This is one of the better Hammer films that I remember seeing, um, but again, need to watch it again. Um, um, I think with this release, they've replaced, uh, uh, replaced the original effects with CGI effects, which is fine in theory if you offer it as an alternative to the original film, but unfortunately Studio Canal decided to replace the original effects with the CGI ones, and that's the only option you can watch the movie with. There are, there's no option to watch the original unedited movie. It's a bit like what George Lucas did with Star Wars, messing around with it. Fans were up in arms about it. Very silly thing to do. Still, I look forward to seeing the movie. Um, the next up... Excuse me. Next up, uh, there was a 3 for 17 offer on Amazon. Don't usually take part in these kind of things, but they had a few new releases which I really love. Uh, not really love, was really wanting to pick up. Uh, the first one is uh, the Enter the Dragon 40th Anniversary Edition. Lots of people have got this. I'm a huge fan of Enter the Dragon. I've, it's one of my favourite films, really, uh, ever. Certainly one of my favourite martial arts films. Endlessly, endlessly rewatchable. Hugely enjoyable. Bruce Lee's a legend. What more can you say? I have the original Warner Brothers release of this on Blu-ray, but I really wanted to get this, but just wanted to wait for a price drop. And this cost me, what, around £5.66? Uh, outstanding. Sorry, distracted by the TV. There was somebody showing their breasts. Anyway, uh, yeah, this looks like a really nice release. Slightly different from the American one, but um, everything's on there. I've heard um, varying opinions on this transfer, so I'll check it out for myself and see what it's like. As you see, it, I can see I haven't even opened it yet, but I will watch it soon. I'm, I'm a huge fan of this film. I'm really glad to have gotten that. And um, the other one was Little Shop of Horrors, another one which just came out. Um, I was very tempted to import the US Digibook of this, but I couldn't really justify the expense. And this has got everything on it. It's identical in every way to that release, except it's in a standard Amory. This is a hugely enjoyable film, one that I grew up on. I used to watch it endlessly as a, as a youth. I particularly love the bit where Steve Martin uh, is introduced as the dentist and starts beating up his patients and all that sadistic shit going on. It was very... <laughs> it was hilarious. I loved it. And then Bill Murray's in it as the as a patient, it was just uh, absolutely awesome. A great movie, one of the few musicals really that I can really, really enjoy. And uh, a, a classic, for me anyway, a, per a personal classic. I really can't wait to watch this again. And it's got the director's cut on there too, with the alternative ending, so great. And then the third one in the offer was uh, Copland. I think this is also the director's cut version. I haven't seen this movie in years. I remember it being awesome. Just really wanted to watch it again. and. Uh, you know, you've got an all-star cast in there, and it's you know, still one of Stallone's best performances. You've got Ray Liotta, Harvey Keitel, De Niro. You can't go wrong. Can't wait to watch this again. Um, okay. And um, then, this is quite a lot of stuff, guys, so I'm going to try and be quick. Um, then I saw in FOP, um, which is a store that sells music and Blu-rays and DVDs and stuff, books, for cheap. Um, they had a lot of masses of cinema releases reduced and they had one I really wanted and the one I wanted was Die Nibelungen, the Fritz Lang film. I'm a big fan of Fritz Lang's work but I have never seen Die Nibelungen. It's an epic two-part sort of fantasy film uh, that um, based on a, an old myth uh, that was also the basis for Wagner's Ring Cycle of Operas and uh, it looks fantastic, uh, hugely influential and I can't wait to watch it, it just sounds uh, wonderful. Um, and uh, you know Eureka always do a great job on their uh, on their Blu-rays. It's a great company. I, I much prefer them to Criterion personally. I like Criterion stuff. Some of it I don't like. Uh, I have issues with them overall as a company, but uh, Eureka masters masters of cinema range is top notch. They do great work. And uh, while I was there, they had uh, the the, the la, 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 Nightmare Before Christmas only three pounds with any purchase. So a bargain. I couldn't turn it down. Uh, I already own the old Region 1 DVD, which I was happy with. That was a no rush to upgrade, but I love the movie. It's great fun. It's perfect for Halloween and for Christmas. And uh, usually, uh, yeah, just a, just a great movie. I love stop motion animation anyway, but this is this is a, you know, a modern classic, I would say. Most people have seen this, and I, I always, always get a kick out of watching it. And yeah, for £3, you can't complain. And so, next up, um, there was three more um, titles that I got on the Amazon's uh, 3 for 17 offer, just when I think I can, uh, you know, uh, quit my spending for the month, they add some more titles I really wanted in there, so I decided, fuck it, 
I'll just get them now. Uh, again, most, um, oh yeah, all relatively recent releases of catalogue titles. Um, the first one is The Fly, the original 1958 Fly with Vincent Price. These all look like really good Blu-rays, they're all Fox titles, they all have nice looking extras on there. I've never seen the original Fly. I've seen a hell of a lot of B-movies and sci-fi films from that period, but I've never seen the original Fly, which I'm ashamed to say. I've seen the Cronenberg remake many times, but uh, I haven't seen this one, so I'm really looking forward to checking it out. A bit of a misleading cover, I feel, though. Um, it's sort of black and white. It's not horrible, but uh, the, the the film's in full colour, so there's the fly. Um, I also picked up 12 O'Clock High, another one I've never seen, Gregory Peck, World War II film. Um, I, I, it just sounded like something I'd be really interested in. I like this kind of movie. Um, I like Gregory Peck. It just sounds, sounds like something I'm really going to enjoy. I'll get back to you and let you know what I think of it. And... Um, uh, last one is The Sand Pebbles, which is the only Steve McQueen film that I've never seen. I just never got around to watching it, never got around to buying the the blue, uh, sorry, the DVD. Um, and uh, anyway, I'm a big fan of McQueen's work, but uh, i just never seen this, so uh, it's now seemed like the perfect time to get it for just over a fiver. Look forward to checking it out. I will be yeah, watching all this stuff at some point. <laughs> Life does get in the way though. Um, okay, so there's a few new releases. Um, I wish I could have I had a chance to open all these up and show you guys in more detail, as I said, next month. Uh, first up is The Seven Samurai Steelbook, which is a limited edition exclusive to Zavi. I don't quite know why BFI decided to release this as a limited edition steelbook. I'm assuming they're going to release a standard Amory version at some point. Um, but uh, one of my favourite films of all time, a hugely influential film for me personally. I really, I absolutely adore the film, love Kurosawa's work. I already own the Criterion Edition, which is pretty much the definitive release of Seven Samurai. You, you can't really top that one, and this one I, I, I don't think has. It's pretty sparse on the extras, although it does, it does have a documentary which isn't on the Criterion release. Re, uh, release. But uh, I'm a whore for Kurosawa, and it's, do you know what I mean, the Seven Samurai, so I just had to pick it up. See what it's like compared to the Criterion one, check out the picture quality. Love the look and steel book, a bit of a weird one, very basic sort of design, embossed lettering. You know, it's the spine in the back, and it looks pretty cool, and it's a classic movie, so I had to get it. Well, I didn't have to, but I wanted to. Just don't tell my girlfriend, okay? She doesn't know about how much I spent this month. Um, and I also picked up the Halloween uh, 35th Anniversary Edition, Digi uh, not Digibook, sorry, Steelbook. Most people have, you guys have picked up this release. It's Halloween, uh, John Carpenter is my favourite director of all time. You always will be. This this is a classic movie. I don't need to talk about it. If you haven't seen it, please watch it. Really looking forward to seeing what the transfer is like, the new one supervised by Dean Cundy. You've got the new documentary with Jimmy Lee Curtis at a horror convention on there. Looks great. Lovely looking steelbook. Really happy to uh, to pick this one up. I don't mind double dipping on it. I have the original one, but uh, you know when it, when it comes to Carpenter movies, forget it. You know I'm a sucker. I'm, I'm just going to buy whatever is put out there. I, I love the man's work and I always will. Halloween. And then also the uh, Wicker Man Final Cut. I got the standard version. I wasn't really interested in getting the steelbook. Uh, another British classic. You know, if you haven't seen the Wicker Man, please check it out. I won't go on about it. Edward Woodward is, for what it's worth, one of my favourite actors who was in very few films. One of the great underrated British actors of all time. Haven't had a chance to watch the Final Cut yet, but from what I see, really nice transfer. They've done a really good job on this and uh, nice extras. You've got the soundtrack on there too. Great release. Uh, uh, looks like a great release. And then another uh, British classic, Watership Down, uh, one of my absolute favourite animated films of all time. I think of it as a horror movie, a lot of people might not, but to me it's a fucking horror movie. Like, it's gory and it's uh, unsettling and, uh, uh, I mean, yeah, kids can watch it, but also actually I do think it's something the kids should watch. It's quite, you know, it's, uh, it's good. We'll teach them a few things about life. <laughs> so, you know, a movie that's traumatised many generations of youngsters, but... Uh, a very worthy movie nonetheless, and a gorgeous film, you know, lovely animation, great soundtrack. Just, yeah, it's a classic. If you haven't seen this, check it out, and if you ever get the chance to see, if you enjoy this, sorry, um, you should watch a film called The Plague Dogs, which is very similar to Watership Water Down. Very harrowing, pretty fucked up movie. It's only on DVD, but if you get a chance, check it out. And uh, the last of the new UK releases is um, Creepshow. Uh, just one of my absolute favourite horror movies. Um, another one I really just grew up watching and 
I have a lot of fond memories of and I've picked up in every format that's been available. Been waiting for a good UK release of this for a long time and I'm glad to see Second Sight put it out, ported over all the extras from the DVD. Nice cover art. You can't beat it. I love anthology horror films and vignettes and stuff like that and, and TV shows too. Um, all that, I'll, I always dig that stuff and this is a great movie. You know, it's different watching this now, but when you're a kid, this is actually a pretty fucking scary movie. It's got some really pretty messed up moments in it. I mean, now obviously we can see it's a sort of tongue-in-cheek nod to the old DC horror comics, but um, then, you know, as a youngster, it petrified me quite a bit. And, uh, yeah, the cockroach uh, sequence in particular really dis it didn't disturb me, it just disgusted me. I just thought it was fucking gross. This is a great movie. Fantastic cast. One of Romero's best for me, and uh, I love it. I can't wait to check out the new Blu-ray. Alright, we're nearly done. Um, we're just on to the final um, one, which are the American imports. Which are, these are mostly John Carpenter releases. So uh, first up, we've got Scream Factory's, uh, Scream Factory's release of Prince of Darkness. Um, Scream Factory are doing a great job, at, at least with releasing loads of Carpenter movies. I wish the UK distributors would get off their asses and start releasing these movies. Um, this looks like a very worthy upgrade to my crappy old Studio Canal um, DVD. Uh, this is a great underrated film. It's one that most horror fans, I think, agree is a really great underrated Carpenter movie, and it's got a it's got a good uh, following now, and it gets a lot of uh, um, kudos. Um, really nice looking Blu-ray. It's not packed to the gills with extras, but it does have some new ones. Really like the cover art for this. There's a lot of the cover art that uh, these guys put out, and a few other companies that I don't like at all. It's pretty pretty guff, but um, this looks nice and um, yeah, a great little underrated horror from from the master. Oh no. I also got the uh, the Duke Book of Halloween too. Yeah, fuck it. I know it's crazy. It's it's essentially the same as the UK Steel Book, but I wanted both. You know, as I told you, I'm a carpenter nut, and fuck it, I'm not gonna apologise for it. I like the look of this Digi Book. I wanted the Digi Book, and it's Halloween uh, in time for Halloween. Well, it was in time for Halloween anyway. Uh, yeah, really nice looking thing. Yeah, it's a bit thin, but uh, it was a good price. I don't know. There you go. Um, and then I also got another great underrated Carpenter movie, which is uh, In the Mouth of Madness, starring Sam Neill. Um, which, another one which many agree is, uh, you know, I really uh, want to... Well, many people say it's Lord Carpenter's last great movie. Um, I don't tend to agree with that, but it gets a lot of... Uh, a lot of people talk about this one and like it now, which is good, because it's a really, really cool movie with Lovecraftian elements, and uh, I, I just think it's awesome. Hugely entertaining, and i got to say, I was a bit disappointed that Scream Factory or some other company didn't get the rights to this from Warner's, but fair play to Warner's. They don't stick on any new extras or anything, but the transfer looks superb. It looks and sounds excellent. I think this might be a 4K transfer, correct me if I'm wrong, but it looks and sounds beautiful. They really did a good job in the transfer for this one. Very impressed. Great movie. Hope it gets a UK release from Arrow or somebody, but in the meantime, this is great. And, um, okay, we're into the last few now. Bela Lugosi, The Devil Bat from Kino Classics. Just a really cheesy 50s, 50s or 40s, I can't remember, uh, horror movie. Uh, not one of Lugosi's best by any means. It might be a little too slow paced for some people. I really enjoy it. It's a ludicrous plot, and but really enjoyable. Perfect for Halloween. Uh, this is a public domain movie, so you'll be able to find it in all sorts of cheap have DVD uh, packages and stuff, but I really wanted to get a nice restored copy of it, and uh, yeah, I really like this movie. You know, it's not one of the best, as I said, but good fun, great for Halloween. Another great fun one for Halloween uh, is Abbott and Costello Meet Frankenstein. Uh, this is out of print now, um, so I'm glad I managed to track it down and get it for very, very cheap. I'm very happy to have it. Uh, lovely looking Blu-ray. Uh, I feel like, you know, I like Abbott and Costello, I like that kind of humour, it's obviously dated for some people now, it doesn't bother me, I really enjoy it, this is a really cool movie. As far as I'm concerned, it's part of the official Universal Monsters sort of canon, it's the only appearance that Bela Lugosi makes as Dracula, after the original Dracula movie. He played vampires many times, but he never returned to the role of Dracula, except in this. And you've also got Lon Chaney Jr. back as a wolfman, and Glenn Strange standing in for Boris Karloff as Frankenstein. Great fun movie, excellent um, just for all the family at Halloween time, you know, a really good one to stick on. Really, really enjoy it. And then the last one. Whoa, hang on guys, pile's falling down, this is going to be a mess. Oh shit, there we go. Anyway, sorry, the last one is The Monster Squad, another one which is out of print now. And a really, uh, I got it for a really nice cheap price. Great, oh awesome, nice and cheap, great, it's never going to be released here. But of course, it got stung by customs and I had to pay an exorbitant customs charge for it, so kind of pissed about that. Okay, confession time, people. I've never seen The Monster Squad. Yeah, I know, shocking, right? 
I don't know. I've met like one other person in at least where I that I know that has seen this. What I've got one or two, but this isn't a movie that I remember being on in the UK much when I was growing up or being around in video and stuff. I mean, I know it was released here obviously, but it's not one that I remember being exposed to much. It's not like The Goonies, which was on TV all the time, and obviously everybody remembers that. But I just don't remember it being around in the UK much, and it's never had an official release on DVD or whatever either, which hasn't helped. Um, so I know a lot of people love this movie. It sounds right up my street. I love Shane Black's work, and he wrote the screenplay for this, so we know. And it just, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it. I just wish I'd been able to watch it at Halloween. Um, still, I'll watch it soon. And maybe I'll even do a review. But yeah, this is one of those ones where I just think it's kind of weird that I've gotten to the age and that I am, and I still haven't seen it. So I, I had to get the Monster Squad. All right, that's all. Oh, man. That's everything for this update. Thank you for watching, if you have watched, and um, please rate, um, comment, subscribe, you know, let me know what you guys think. Um, this will just be the first of probably many videos, we'll see how we go, I have a very hectic and busy life, uh, but I will try and do some more. Next month will be a slightly, uh, well, it will be a smaller update, but it will be more coherent, and I think I'll, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about the stuff I picked up. So keep looking out for other videos on my channel, thank you for watching, and uh, see you later.